and I welcome you as we celebrate Pentecost. And as we do so, we'll follow the order of service as you find it in your bulletin. And uh, we'll begin with uh, the confession as we'll be using Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is a psalm of King David, a psalm he was inspired by God to write as he was remorseful over his sin with Bathsheba and her husband Uriah. And so, please rise for the confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As King David confessed his sin to the Lord, we too come before the Lord and confess our sins to him. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Dear friends in Christ, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. God heard David's confession of sin, and God has heard your confession of sin. As Nathan once said to King David, the Lord has put away your sin, you shall not die. So I say to you today, the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. God has washed you. God has purified you. On account of Jesus, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You have been forgiven. You have been restored. You have been renewed with the right spirit. Therefore, witness to others the ways of God and his grace. Sing aloud of the righteousness of God, and open your lips and mouth to declare the praise of God. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit works in our lives through the Word of God, and so we hear God speak to us through these words here today. Our first reading, our Old Testament reading today, comes to us from Numbers chapter 11. I begin reading with verse 24. This is also the basis for our message today. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord God came down in a cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. But they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, 
The assistant of Moses from his youth said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Here then also reading from Acts chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them, and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear, each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Fergie and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them in their own tongues, the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Job. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thus far, the word of the Lord. And at this time, I'd like to especially address uh, the children that are with us here today. You know, this weekend we celebrate not only Pentecost, but Memorial Day weekend. And traditionally, this kind of marks the beginning of, of summer, a time when a lot of times we take it a little easier. Maybe we go on trips and vacations, have outings, enjoy the outdoors, the weather's nicer. You can go a lot of nice places in your life. A lot of exciting things. Maybe you have a have a little trip planned with your family. Maybe you don't, but, but there's all kinds of exciting places we go. Go to school, go to be with friends, family, go to church. Lots of different places you will go in your life. Now sometimes when we go places, we need to be prepared, so we take some things with us. And depending on what, where you're going, maybe you would take a backpack with you. Some people will take them to school, or if they're going out 
going hiking or something. Got my backpack here, I've got a bottle of water, different things I need. Now, sometimes that's good to have along. And again, depending on what you're doing, you might need um, you might need boots as well. So I got some boots here. Those are good for again for hiking or working or other such things. When you go places, oftentimes you take things with you. And that can be important. But there's one thing I want you always to take with you. And never to forget. That no matter where you go. Because you know, sometimes we might be afraid. Sometimes we might be afraid that we're, we'll be left alone. We'll be left by ourselves. And that can be a scary thing. This is something I want you always to remember, and it's the words from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. And it says, keep your lives free from the love of money, for God has promised, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. God promises that, that he will always be with us, that he will not leave us alone. And we know we can trust these words because even when we were lost in our sin, God came to us, Jesus came to us. And he took our sin and he went to the cross and he suffered and died for our sins. And he rose from the dead and is alive. And because Jesus lives, we know that he will keep his promise. He will always be with us because he will live forever. When you believe in Jesus, this promise holds true for you as well. Oh, if we reject Jesus, well, then it might not be so good. We might find ourselves without God. But when we believe in him, we don't have to be afraid. God is with us. And so whether we're happy or sad, whether we're brave, or afraid, whether we're at school or not at school or at home or somewhere else, wherever we go, throughout the summer, throughout our lives, we can trust that God will be with us. In fact, because of Jesus, we will be with God forever in heaven. And that is a great promise that God gives to us. And so let us have a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you that you have been with us in the past. And we ask that you'd be with us throughout the summer and beyond. We ask that you'd grant to us your spirit, that you continue to bring us to your church, continue to strengthen our faith, to study of your Bible in worship. We lower God, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. And the Gospel of this day comes to us from John chapter 7. Begin reading with verse 37. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel. We then join together in confessing our Christian faith as we use the words of the Apostles' Creed, as you will find it in the inside back cover of your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we'll sing our next hymn, hymn 496, Holy Spirit, Light Divine, and we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 5. Verses 1, 3, and 5. mercy and peace be unto you from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, was there ever a time when you felt as if God's Spirit were resting upon you? When was it? What was the occasion? What made you think that it was God's Spirit resting upon you? I want you to take a moment to think about that and what that experience was like. Because here today again we celebrate Pentecost. Also, did you ever share that experience with someone else? Why or why not? What kept you from doing so? A lot of different questions to ponder today, but as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, we see that God's Spirit is active in our lives. And we consider our Old Testament reading today from Numbers chapter 11. It speaks about how God's Spirit came and He rested upon the 70 elders of Israel and especially upon Medad, Eldad. But before we explore that text, let me ask you a couple more questions. Have you ever looked at someone else and thought, God's Spirit is upon them? You can see how God's Spirit is at work in their life, and is active and is evident. But again, how did you know it? What made you think about it? And how did you respond to it? Did you rejoice? Did you celebrate with them for the good thing that God is accomplishing in their life? Maybe were you a little jealous, wishing God's Spirit would be upon you in that fashion? Or even judgmental? I know it's a lot of questions, but as we gather on this Pentecost weekend, we acknowledge the reality that God's Spirit is real, He is active, and He's present in our lives and in the lives of others. God's Spirit has certainly been active in the past. Why just consider our Old Testament reading today? We're told how God's Spirit came and rested upon 
the 70 elders of Israel. The elders of Israel had gathered near the Lord, near the tabernacle of God, the, pre the place where God oftentimes made his presence among his people. And as they gathered there, God came down in the form of a cloud and, and his spirit was present there and they began prophesying. But two individuals were not among those elders that day. Me, Dad, and no dad. Now we're not sure why they were not there, but God found them. And his spirit rested upon them as well. And they too were prophesying in the camp. Now when it was reported to Moses, Joshua, Joshua was, was a bit jealous. Joshua told Moses to, to command them not to do this, tell them to stop doing it. Why Jesus faced a similar situation in Luke chapter 9, we're told on one occasion the disciples came and, and told Jesus about how they saw a man casting out demons and they told him to stop it because, well, they're now part of their group. Jesus rebuked his disciples and said, well, let them do it. For whoever is not against us is for us. But here in Numbers chapter 11, verse 29, Moses expresses his great wish. And he says this, Are you jealous for my sake? Oh, would that, that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would have put his spirit upon them. There was no need to be jealous. Because when God pours out his spirit, he does so generously. There's plenty for everyone. It is kind of like the tongues of fire we see burning up here. As you see those candles burn now, if I were to take a candle here and I were to light the candle off of one of these you see my candle burns but that one keeps burning as well the light is not diminished the light has only increased now I don't have 70 candles we'll do just deal with one today but if we lit up 70 candles here, you would get the picture. That candle would still be burning just as brightly, but then there would be 70 more burning. And the light would only increase. And so it is with God's Spirit. When God is active in our life and He pours out His Holy Spirit, and He pours out His Spirit upon someone else, Oh, it only increases the light in the midst of a dark world. God is generous. And Moses expressed his wish that all of the Lord's people would have God's Spirit upon them in a very powerful way. Sometimes, though, we don't always share that desire. Sometimes we may be more concerned just about how God pours out His Spirit upon, upon ourselves rather than others. Sometimes maybe we're a little jealous of how God's Spirit is active in someone else or somewhere else. And just consider, have you ever prayed that God would pour out His Spirit upon someone? And I don't mean just family members or friends. Oh, certainly I hope you pray for that. How about strangers? You ever pray that God would pour out a spirit upon someone you don't even know? Now, the other day, thinking about this text, just the other night I was riding my bike, trying to gain a little strength. And I thought about this text as I was riding past many different homes, I asked God that he pour his spirit upon the people living in those homes. 
I don't know who they all are or what's going on in their life. But I do know that when God pours out a spirit, it only increases the light. Although our own sinful nature may cause us and tempt us to be reluctant, to be like Joshua was here, to be, be resistant and of these sorts of things, but yet God invites us to ask that His Spirit would be there abundantly. We could share the desire of Moses because God is generous. Why Jesus had promised when He ascended into the heavens that He would pour out His Spirit. And Jesus had already been very generous with His disciples and with all of us. He came into this world, a world of brokenness, a world filled with jealousy and other troubles and divisions and trials, and Jesus lived a life without such jealousy. He took our sin and he carried it to the cross. And after his resurrection, he appeared to his disciples for 40 days, giving many convincing proofs that he was alive. And then he ascended into the heavens. And 10 days later, as promised, he poured out his Holy Spirit. 50 days after Easter. And so we gather today, this weekend, 50 days after Easter, and celebrate Pentecost. We're told the story in our second Bible reading in Acts chapter 2, a familiar story. We read it every year. There they were, the disciples, the followers of Jesus, gathered together when suddenly there was a sound of a great rushing wind, and tongues of fire came and rested upon the heads of those that were there. God poured out his spirit. And the disciples, the apostles, were then empowered to go forth and to speak in various tongues and in other languages so everyone could hear in their own native language the gospel of Jesus Christ. What a great thing it is. wish of Moses was beginning to be fulfilled. God has given us his spirit as well. For many of us, it, it begins at a very young age. It begins in our baptism. Because you see, later as Peter is preaching to the crowd that had gathered there on that Pentecost day, in Acts chapter 2, in verses 38 and 39, Peter said this, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promises for you and your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls. In baptism, God pours out his Holy Spirit upon us. And that is such a good thing. If you know of someone who is not baptized, and they would give it any consideration, I'd be delighted to speak with them. Because in baptism, the generosity of God is theirs and pours out His Holy Spirit. But it need not end there. Why, in fact, in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, Jesus was speaking, and he said this, If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? We can ask God to send his Holy Spirit, and he will do so because it is a good gift. Because, you see, the desire of Moses is really the desire of God. To 
His Spirit would rest on all people. God wants all to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. God wants all people to praise Him and to worship Him and to glorify Him. And it's when God's Spirit is active in our life that those things happen. God is generous and He gives His Spirit. And when it does so, it only extends the light. It does not diminish it. The light behind me from which I lit this candle still burns brightly. How much more so the Spirit of God. And this is good because when God pours out His Holy Spirit, good things happen. In 1 Corinthians 12, 3, we're told that no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. When God pours out His Holy Spirit upon us, He creates faith. He strengthens faith. He enables us to confess and believe that Jesus is Lord. And what a blessing that is. To trust in the Lord Jesus, to rely upon Him for our life and our salvation. To have faith in Christ and the work He's accomplished. Because when faith is there, salvation will be there as well. Furthermore, when God pours out His Holy Spirit, other good things happen as well. For the 70 elders of Israel, oh, they were prophesying, they were speaking the word of God, and this was good. Last week, as we celebrated confirmation, we considered Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God's Spirit is active in our life, those fruits of the Spirit begin to show themselves. Perhaps this is one way we can see the evidence of God's Spirit in our life or in the lives of others. But God's Spirit moves us to action. And what a blessing that is. These past months, we've seen another great illustration of this happen before our eyes. When Beth and I were both out due to injury and illness, indeed, posed some challenges for the congregation. But God's Spirit was active and God's Spirit motivated various individuals to step forward and to do things that perhaps they had not done before. But God would continue to accomplish His will and His purpose. I'm not going to cite any specific examples, although I can certainly think of numerous examples. I was able to watch it from a distance. I don't want to leave anyone out. I don't want to miss any that perhaps I'm not unaware of. God's Spirit was clearly active, moving people to action, and good things happen. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, shortly before he ascended into the heavens, Jesus made this promise to his disciples. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. God poured out his Spirit in Acts chapter 2. They did that very thing. They spoke in various tongues and they made a bold witness concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when God pours out His Spirit upon us as well, we too are empowered to act, to step forward, to give a witness of our faith with patience and gentleness, with love, with care. And when we pray that God's Spirit would come upon others, even a stranger we do not know, or a family member or a friend, this is good too. Because they may be able to reach someone else that you are unable to. And 
the light will only burn brighter. You may have noticed God's Spirit resting upon your life, sometimes maybe more so than at other times. You may have noticed God's Spirit resting upon the life of another person. How did you respond? Oh, sometimes we may be tempted to be judgmental or jealous or other such things. Other times we may rejoice and celebrate the great gift. And that is indeed what we can do. We can share the desire of Moses that God would pour out his spirit upon all because that desire is the desire of the Lord. That all would be saved. That all would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. That all would praise and glorify him. And so pray for it. Rejoice in it. For God gives generously and abundantly. May God pour out his spirit upon you. Your family, your friends and neighbors and even the strangers around us. For then the light will only burn brighter. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. As God's Spirit works in our lives, we present ourselves and our offerings to the Lord. Please rise. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Receive our thankfulness and our gratitude for the abundant blessings you give to us. And receive our lives and our service and our time and our offerings as a thanksgiving for these abundant shows of grace that you have given to us. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Lord, we thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to rest upon us. You've given us faith in what you have accomplished through your death and resurrection. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would continue to pour out your Spirit generously so that our faith may be strengthened and that like your apostles of old, we too may give a bold witness the world in which we live. Pour out your spirit upon our family and our friends, our neighbors, especially those that we now name in our hearts. Grant your spirit upon these individuals and even those that we do not know, that their faith may develop in you and the light may ever burn brighter. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we also ask that you would pour your spirit upon those who face various trials, that in the midst of them you would strengthen their faith. We also ask that in your mercy you would bring healing and help and ease their burdens. We pray this day, O oh Lord, that you especially be with your servants, Shelley Olson. Brian Meisner, Gary Matheson, Pat Raymond, Michael Berger, Allison Brigadier, Mary Jane Gemmel, Bob Lang, Corey and Gretchen Ahrens, Berlin Linneman, James Ajay, Matilda Mohan, and all that we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, 
Lord God, we also ask for your blessing upon Adam and Haley as they are united in marriage this weekend. As they begin this journey of marriage together, Lord, we ask that you would empower them by your Spirit to believe in you continually, to follow you all the days of their life, and to love one another with the love you have first shown us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this Memorial Day weekend, Lord God, we also give thanks to you for our nation. And we ask for your blessings upon it. We especially pray this day for those who have served in the armed forces and continue to do so. We pray for them, for their families, and ask for your grace and strength and courage to be upon them. Lord, these things and all others we bring before you, trusting in your mercy and your goodness as we pray the prayer you've given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go from here then, having a right spirit, renew it in you, and teach transgressors God's ways. Sing aloud of God's righteousness and declare his praise. Amen. Remain standing for our closing hymn, hymn 965. However, if this is a hardship for you, uh, feel free to be seated. Seeing any then, again, I encourage you to greet one another and go in his peace. <laughs>